I'm going to drop some jaws and break some hearts. Apple's over-the-ear cans are heavier and more than double the price of even the most high-end gaming headsets while missing out on some of those gamerific features such as a removable boom mic you can put right next to your suck hole, RGB glow to add frames per second to your rig, and a software program for additional controls such as chat game blend or boosting mid-range frequencies where footsteps would be. But you're a discerning gentleman, maybe a middle-aged podiatrist or cardiologist, and you own the Apple Maximuses for general media consumption, pumping hot bops while you're on the treadmill, and watching the latest Gamer Heaven video so you can hear all those rich warm tones in AK-40 Kevin's vocal cords. Gross, I know. Today we're going to set up and review Apple AirPod Maxes. They're over-the-ear cans at $550, although Amazon has them cheaper and has for about a year now. They've been like $470. That's where you get them if you want them. In this video, we are on a specific mission. We're going to use AirPod Maxes for a purpose that they ain't ought to meant to do. Gaming. Gamers. So we're going to be testing things like stereo spread for that situational awareness knowing where enemies are, testing the built-in microphone to hear what your comms are going to be like, her sentimental secrets to scumbums, scallywags, and sailors, and also some Apple-specific limitations, such as the fact I can't get the microphone working with a wired connection on the consoles. And while these are arguably some of the best consumer-grade headphones you can pick up, especially if you're in the Apple ecosystem, by the end of this video, we're going to answer the grand old question, are these worth a pickup, and a much, much smaller scale question, how does this headset work for gaming? Let's get it. As for the pack chain, included accessories on the AirPod Max, which if I don't mention it anywhere in the video, I need to mention it now, is on a substantial sale on Amazon. Apple still wants $550 for this bad boy, which is the price that this sucker launched for two years ago. However, Amazon has slashed the price from $550 down to $480. And it's been at that price for several months now, so I'm pretty sure that's like the going asking price in Jeff Bezos' backyard. And that is the link that's in the description below. The only exception to that rule would be is if you want custom engraving, as Apple does include that faux free, which is nice, or if you want to include Apple Care, as you cannot do that from Amazon to my knowledge. Well, actually, according to my calculations, I love to correct myself like I'm a different person. Whenever you purchase an Apple device, whether it's an iPhone, headset, iWatch, whatever, it doesn't matter if you get it from Amazon, Walmart, I don't think they're an authorized vendor, but the Navy Exchange, for example, tax-free, military types, all you do is take the serial number and then you log into your Apple account and you have a periodic time frame, usually 60 days to add Apple Care. Peeling back that cellophane on this freshie. Mm, I'm already getting that Apple aroma through the box. I I already know there's going to be a white placard in there that says made by Apple in California. Once you lift up the top section of the box, you are greeted with your headphones, which are in this included carrying case, which is probably one of the stupidest designs in consumer electronics that I've ever seen. It is going to be color match to match your headset. This is in space gray, which IMO, in my personal opinion, is the slickest looking colorway of them all. As where this is going to match all space gray accessories, iPhones, iPads. I was kind of wrestling with this thing that looks like a sleep mask, so I guess you could coat this with some kind of jelly or healing oil oils for the bags under the eyes and then strap this to the front of your corneas but I'm not going to be I'm just going to right there these are hefty that's the first thing I noticed and that is because these are metal as were almost all other headsets besides like two or three other models I can think of are entirely plastic you have your documentation in this envelope and then you are going to have your lightning connector which you know it'd be kind of nice to see USB-C in here as that is the universal standard and Apple's now been forced into adopting that but the Maxes came out two plus years ago so they, they're still using the lightning connector so we have five pieces of documentation in here, which is a little bit surprising from an economy friendly company like Apple that is so goddamn economy friendly that they won't even include bricks, charging bricks in their packaging because that just adds to the problem of e-waste and they assume that you already own one. If you're going to make that assumption, you should also assume that I don't need five separate pieces of documentation to understand how to use these bad boys and maybe condense this into one QR code that could be scanned from the packaging or maybe one physical pamphlet because that is nice to have in the box. Huge pro is the setup and integration with the Apple ecosystem. So if you have yourself a MacBook, an iPhone, an iPad that you treat as a babysitter for your kid, all those devices can seamlessly switch between using this Max. And the initial setup is stupid easy. You literally just power up the headset, make sure your iPhone's in range and has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi turned on. It'll pop up just like normal AirPod Buds and say, hey, you want to connect these hell of expensive titanium joints? And hell yeah, you do. I don't know if they're titanium. I didn't check my periodic table prior to the 
review, but it's definitely metal though. Something's gotta be said for the camera presence for sure. It definitely does look slick because it's low profile. It's almost flush up against your head and people can clearly tell that it's metal, not just painted plastic. You never really see streamers, YouTubers, gamers using these headsets. And there might be a reason for that. We'll be figuring it out. Also a weird ass quirk. I can't even really list that as a con. It's just hell of weird is that the ear cups actually smelled like pine saw. If you've ever used pine saw for cleaning floors, it smells like the OG original pine saw smell. So maybe go to your grandma's house, look under the kitchen cabinet sink, and you'll probably find a bottle of this stuff. Yeah, the ear cups reek of like some kind of chemical, which I'm sure isn't great for you, but um, yeah smells a little bit, a little smelly. Now, another huge cost that you need to take into consideration, well, the cost isn't really huge, but it's just an additional accessory that you really shouldn't need to buy. Gaming headsets have a built-in microphone, whether the boom arm retracts or it's removable or it's just built into the ear cups. You're going to have a mic and it's going to be usable on the consoles and the PC. However, with the Apple side of the house, since these do not have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, you need to get an adapter, which is going to be lightning on one end. Another huge con that lightning is utilized here instead of USB-C, which is the universal standard for everything. Thing. But you can spend $35 for the authentic Apple joint over here, or you can get an equivalent generic knockoff over here for 10 bones. Make sure it's the same type of cable. This looks like a two pole, but there's three pole, four pole, etc. Just make sure that the stats line up. Look at the tech specs on the landing page. But even with one of these adapters, which I've had for years, because Apple's been using lightning since the Civil War, the Great Depression, basically, when they got away from that massive connector, and then they were just forced to move to USB-C. But it's not even real USB-C. It's, it's just the actual port, the shape of it. All the perks and benefits of going with USB-C are not there. And what really stinks here is the fact that this is still using Lightning. Current day, 2023, Apple is actually converting to USB-C. We're seeing it on the iPhones and the MacBooks and the iPods. So the last devices that are going to be using Lightning are unfortunately going to be the AirPod series, the pods and the Maxes. So eventually you're going to have to have an extra Lightning cable on you just for this one accessory or device. And that's just, that's kind of dumb. I like just having a USB-C cable. It's the golden standard for a reason. It works. It's missionary position. It, it gets the job done for everybody. So as for the battery life and charge time, because these are both pretty damn impressive, you have up to 20 hours of listening time. And this includes with ANC or noise cancellation engaged and spatial audio turned on as well. So two battery draining features engaged. Love to see that. And then as for the charge time, I love to see this too, because it is freaking fast charging. Five minutes gets you around an hour and a half of listening time. You'll get 50% in 30 minutes and 80% in just under an hour and a full charge in just two hours. That's pretty damn impressive. And keep in mind, you're not going to see a difference from charger to charger because this charges at a maximum of 3.2 watts. A little further detail on that, it goes into a low power mode after five minutes of being taken off your head. And after three days, 72 hours, it will go into an ultra low power mode where it turns off Bluetooth and the Find My device features. The exact same extra low power mode that it goes in instantly if you use that really crappy carrying case. Which by the way, the creative engineer, the designer of that case explained that it looks like this debacle to not be comparable to other carrying cases that are big and bulky. Oh, you mean the ones that actually provide coverage for the headset? And you don't have to carry it by the head strap like a little purse looking like a Nimrod with your not protected ear cups, but it's the only way to put it into low power mode. And what I don't understand, this headset's been out for over two years. Why can Apple not push a firmware patch or update that allows you to just hold down either the crown or this rectangular button for about three seconds and that turns it off, puts it in that ultra low power mode? Because what if you lose this carrying case? What if you lose it as in throw it out because you're like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. In that scenario, you are going to lose around two to 3% of battery life every eight hours that this headset is out of the carrying case until it goes into that ultra low power mode, which isn't crazy. You could leave this out for three days and you're going to lose about 9% battery life. And keep in mind, five minutes charge gets you an hour and a half of listening time. So that really does help. But still, the carrying case is so whack. To put this headset into Bluetooth discoverable mode so you can connect it to your PC or console, I probably not. The switch PlayStation 5 and Series S and X, none of them recognize these as a Bluetooth headset. Probably because it's not an authorized device. There might be some kind of janky converter or adapter you can use. They didn't work normally. You're going to slip them out of their stupid, stupid carrying case, which is immediately going to power on your Maxes. As you can tell from this low battery flashing light, you want to know why it's low battery? Because it has to stay in that carrying case or else it's constantly draining. Hold down this long rectangular button, so not the crown that looks like a massive dial wheel off the iWatch, but this sucker right here. Hold it down for about five seconds. Five seconds exactly. That's what the instruction manual says on the bottom that LED light's going to begin to pulsate or flash, and then just do the usual rigmarole to connect via Bluetooth on Mac or PC. Okay, 
Um, it says headset or headphones over here. There we go. And now it is listed as Kevin's AirPod Max with the find my feature engaged. Yes, please connect them. Connected. Nice. Time for a mic test. So I'm going to do a little mic test. A little test. Closes. Peter Piper pickled the pepper. I'm on Pickle Patrol Patricia. In Call of Duty, my gun goes pitter patter, pitter patter, pit pop pow. Now we're going to check the semblance. Sally sells seashells down by the seashore and also sells her sentimental secrets to scumbum scallywags and sailors. How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? Unique New York. You're gonna know if it sounds good before I do. I still haven't listened to it in my editing software and DaVinci Resolve. I will say it is nice not having an external mic sticking off out of your peripherals, especially when you're gaming and you see that stupid light. Um, this is kind of nice, little flush design with the microphones built into the ear cups. What the fuck was that? WTF. Listening back to that, I had a lot of moments where it sounded like I was underwater, Michael Phelps. And this happened whenever I'd be connected to the PC via Bluetooth. I'm not sure if it doesn't have a consistent enough Bluetooth connection to where when it's trying to pass audio sound output and then also receive input through the microphone, pass that information to my PC. Maybe it's a little bit too much. I tried it with the ANC on and then also transparency mode. That didn't make any difference. And then the biggest stinkage here is the fact that when you go wired, you can hear on the consoles plugging into the bottom of a controller, but your microphone doesn't work at all. And on the PC side of the house, sounds like this. You're going to know if it sounds good before I do. A full disclosure, that weird microphone effect never happens when you're using it on the phone or an iPod or an iPad or an iMac or any Apple devices, I guess just because it seamlessly integrates with that connection, the Apple ecosystem, you don't really have that janky issues. But when you're trying to go cross-platform Apple to Windows or Apple to a gaming console, that's when all kinds of issues are introduced. And we see the same thing with gaming on a MacBook. I mean, yeah, the Mac hardware is more than capable of gaming, but it has to do with the software and compatibility issues with launchers and games and apps and controller programs and everything else. So I really do love to see that. I was worried that there might be limited PC support since this is an Apple product. Maybe it'd work better with Mac computers, but actually you have full volume control of Windows 10 or 11. As I'm messing with the scroll wheel, that dial wheel on the side, it's actually controlling my PC sounds or volume output. That's great. So my biggest complaint for gameplay isn't that I didn't have a good stereo spread or situational awareness where I couldn't tell if enemies are off to the left, right. I even had a little bit of verticality where I could tell if they were above or below levels. Really depends on what game you're playing too. If you're playing something like EFT, Escape from Tarkov, that has insanely good audio cues. Granted, from up update to update, it gets kind of wonky sometimes, but usually pretty goddamn good. You feel like you're there. That's why it makes you crap your pants. Oh God, oh God, oh God. No! Oh! And they seem to pick up all the ambient sounds, footsteps, people reloading off in the distance, you know, wind rustling through the trees, all that good stuff. The only real complaint I had is that they were a little bit quiet. There were a couple titles where I had them at 80, 90, and they weren't very loud. And since you can't add any kind of an inline amp to this thing, a preamp or a lifter, I wish it got a little bit louder. And I also noticed that in movie and music playback as well. I was listening to some of my Hebop at 100%, and I wasn't really getting that volume, that razzle dazzle to my ear canals that I needed when the bass was thumping and the club was pumping. Well, There's no club. It was just me whipping around in circles here in this room getting buck. I had her, I had her maxed out at a hundred. I craved more. I don't know because other headsets, for example, my daily driver, I never get close to maxing these out. They are disgustingly dirty right now. Let's just put those back down. But I'm only at like 60% with those that are blaring. But even with this adapter, by plugging into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the bottom of a controller, I was able to get game sound, but I could not get my microphone heard. Granted, I was with strangers and maybe they just weren't responding to me. But, you know, I spent some time there saying, hey guys, can you hear me? Hey, hey. And I didn't see that microphone or speaker speaker icon glowing on screen, showing that my voice is being registered and indeed nobody's responding to me. Even went into the system settings and did a little mic test check and there was zero response on the decibel graph. So yeah, I couldn't get a microphone out on either of the consoles, the Xbox or PlayStation, which is unfortunate. PC though, it did work because you can go wireless via Bluetooth or you can use that connector, which weirdly enough, the connector on PC, I was able to get voice out. It was super weird and drop in the comment section below if that's been your experience or if this is just some kind of weird thing on my end. As for a warranty on these Breezies, you only have one year of coverage, which is insane for a $550 headset, considering I've tested $300 joints with two and three year warranties. You can extend that for sure if you want to pay for Apple Plus Care. Let's buy it.
How much is it? Okay. Oh, this is so official. You have to like sign in and enter your serial number. I just wanted a quote of how much it is for my audience. Boom. Here we go. Had to do a little bit of digging, bust out my shovel, if you will. Really just did a couple of searches off camera, but two years of coverage is going to be $59. And that does include that really stupid carrying case as well. Also a quick note on repairability. These are substantially better than the earbud AirPods, obviously, because they are larger. You have more room to work in there. However, finding parts can still be quite difficult because it's Apple. They don't really honor the right to repair very often, or they just hope to God that you don't try and repair it and you send it in to them for maintenance. That's kind of their whole business model and view on customers repairing products that they purchase from them. It's, uh, I know it's weird, but the inside of the AirPod Maxes, I'm overlaying some B-roll from a much better YouTube channel. And as you can see, there's a lot of room to work in there. And also the drivers and all the components are laid out pretty cleanly and in a typical fashion, but finding parts might be an issue. The cons and pros of the AirPod Max, the Max a million, did Apple really give it their Max? Maximum effort. While these cans do a couple of things correctly and the build quality is undeniably solid, there's a couple of cons, shortcomings, limitations, or areas of improvement that I believe are simply a deal breaker for most people. That's why Apple's not selling many of these units, especially because they own Beats. They're kind of double dipping into the over-the-ear headphone category. And yes, I understand Beats is a completely different branch or division, an offshoot of Apple, if you will. And this is more premium build quality and also about $250 more expensive than most Beats. But the sound quality you're going to get out of Beats Studios and these are almost identical because these have an artificial EQ pumped in and equalizer that's an S-curve, basically pumping in bass and a little bit more treble, bright, high-end, if you will, and then attempting to do something with those muddy flat mids. So if you're trying to get this for audio mixing or editing, you're probably not going to use these because it's not really giving you a natural organic sound. It has that artificial equalizer, things that you'd probably like to adjust manually in post-editing. The second big con is going to be that hefty build quality with that all-metal design. While that's cool and all, and it feels good on the hands, and it feels cool when you pick it up, it immediately becomes a nuisance when you start wearing this headset. If you're stationary doing some gaming at a desk, it's not too terrible. But as soon as you start walking around the house with this thing on, or God forbid you try and go for a jog with it, you're going to feel every little step as this thing is hefty, heavier than any headset that I've held. And furthermore than that, they're not very comfortable, not only because of that weight, but then you also have this head strap design, which is very unique. It's not a normal retention strap. It has this little mesh net design, which is good for moisture wicking so you don't collect sweat. That's about all I can say good for it. It doesn't really feel that great on the top of your noggin. And then last but not least, these cloth ear cups aren't terrible. And I do like the fact that they are easily removable and swappable and Apple's basically prompting you to replace these when they get all gummed up and janky for hygienic reasons. And also so they can sell you those really expensive replacement ear cups, which I'm not a huge fan of how the cloth feels on my ears. I will say it does wonders for noise cancellation. It does automatically cut out a ton of your environment noise just by getting good suction around your ear and getting a good seal. Not even talking about the active noise cancellation which we'll talk about during the pro section because it is top tier second to none. But I've got two more cons and they're pretty big setbacks. One of them is going to be the stupid carrying case, which is one of the dumbest designs I've ever seen in a consumer electronic goodie of any kind. Mouse, keyboard, controller. This is just dumb because the headset doesn't turn itself off or go into a low power mode, a sleep state, if you will, to not suck the hell out of your battery life unless you put it in this carrying case. And this doesn't do a very good job of protecting the headset by any means. You've got all this exposed area here, which keep in mind, this is metal, so it can scuff quite easily, unlike plastic headsets. And the actual ports or plugs don't really line up correctly with the cutouts on here, so it's almost like this was an afterthought or a tack-on, a little add-on, and I just don't like this thing at all. But you need to use it in order to get your headset to not continue sucking battery life. So it's mandatory, but sucks. This is just terrible. And the next one is going to be the price. Obviously, if you're looking for a gaming headset, you're going to be looking at things like the Astro A50s or the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pros, which have become my daily drivers over the last six months or so since I reviewed them. And over my shoulder here, you can see a bunch of gaming headsets that I've reviewed on the channel. They generally start at about 100 bucks and stop at about $350. And they're going to have a lot more gamer centric features, such as a better built in microphone. You slide on my protection real quick and then we'll get down to the business. And better stereo spread and a software suite where you can tweak gamerific settings such as RGB lighting and listening for footsteps and shooters and stuff like that. So if you're a gamer, you're not specifically hunting out this headset. You might use it to play games once or twice and then be like, no, I'm just going to use a gaming specific headset. Cool. So we've ruled this out for gamers. But then as far as consumer electronic headphones, $550 is the asking price from Apple, which like I said, it's 470 on Amazon, more expensive than the competitors that offer an almost identical headset. Talking about things like the Sony XM4 or the Bose QuietComfort series, which provided similar, almost identical, indistinguishable audio quality. Considering those headsets are aimed at general consumers and not studio use like reference monitors, where you're looking for 
for a very natural, organic, unmolested sound where it doesn't have that equalizer, that S curve in there, which this definitely does have. So this isn't good for studio use or editing, isn't really good for gaming, which just leaves it for casual use, maybe watching some videos on your iPad, because you're not going to be using these to work out with. God forbid you just pop in your AirPod Pros or something that's not going to feel like you have a, a dumbbell strapped to your noggin. It's painful. There's definitely some pros and things that this headset does correctly. First of all is going to be the build quality. This just feels supreme in hand. You've got the metal ear cups, you've got this nice rubberized soft touch coating on the head strap, and the top of the head strap is actually this mesh or net design, which is great for moisture wicking and looks cool too. That's another thing, just cosmetically, this has to be one of the sexiest headsets I've ever seen. It really does depend on what color you get. The bright, vibrant ones, I'm not a huge fan of, but the all silver or this space gray, mm, muy caliente, very hot. Also, I like how quick and easy it is to remove these ear cups. They are magnetized, pop in and out, and it is encouraged from Apple to replace them, although they're pretty damn expensive. The next pro is going to be battery life at 22 hours, which isn't crazy good, but it also is pretty damn impressive when you compare it to AirPods, standard AirPods and AirPod Pros. The next pro, the overall listening experience is very good. It's not going to give you a natural, flat, organic sound or anything like that because it is a consumer grade headset, so it's going to have kind of a S curve in there. Overall, the sound quality was very good. Movies, music, games, not the best for games, but um, it sounded good though. Bass, low and rumble, nice, bright, clear highs, decent mids, no complaints here. And the last pro, which is the biggest one in my opinion, is this has probably the best transparency mode and noise cancellation I've ever seen, or ANC, ANC, active noise cancellation. And fun feature to use as well, because you can just block out everything around you, the fans from your PC, your HVAC system in your house, but then somebody walks in your studio or your room, and instead of having to pop your headset off, you just press a little button on the side, pop it into transparency mode, and it's like you're having a normal conversation. The person's voice sounds normal and natural. On all accounts, this is just a very hard headset to recommend for anybody, and that really does suck to say, because I love my AirPod Pros. I got the first gen joints, they slap. My girlfriend's got the gen twos, they slap twice as hard. Well, actually, it's, it's very, very similar. I don't really know why these exist, to be 110% honest with you. They do feel good in hand, though. The AirPod Pro Maximilians Maximuses, the, the max joints right here are linked in the description below. Please drop in the comments section your opinion of these titanium cans. Would you ever buy them, honestly? And I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace